The mob never sleeps. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, what do comedian Dave Chappelle and Senator Kirsten Sinema have in common? Well, for starters, both have been hailed by the left as taboo-shattering, talented trailblazers. Kirsten Sinema is one of my deep, dear friends, and I'm so excited that she's just one. She actually came across as very moderate, very normal, and very likable. The first openly bisexual person going into the Senate. Dave Chappelle gave an epic performance on Saturday Night Live's first post-election show last night. Chappelle was obviously hilarious. Dave has always had incredible political insight as an observer. I can't do a lot of things as well as Dave Chappelle. But that was before Chappelle and Cinema deviated from the party line. Now the same left-wing forces that built them up are trying to tear them down. Now let's start with Chappelle. In his new Netflix special called The Closer, he defends J.K. Rowling from the vicious lunatics on the left. Now recall that a few years back, the Harry Potter author and self-made billionaire found herself in the woke mob's crosshairs for merely stating her beliefs that biological sex does, in fact, exist. Tweeting in June 2020, My life has been shaped by being female. I do not believe it's hateful to say so. This is possibly one of the least controversial statements ever posted to Twitter. But based on the left's reaction at the time, you would have thought that she was a war criminal. Few, if anyone, in the entertainment industry dared stick their necks out for the woman whose books made many of them very rich, at least please their kids who love them. But Dave Chappelle stuck his neck out. Canceled J.K. Rowling, my God. Effectually, she said, gender was a fact. And then the trans community got mad as They started calling her a turf. I'm team turf. I agree. I agree, man. Gender is a fact. Then, in his trademark, trademark expletive-laden style, the comedian talked about the newly constructed sexual organs of biological men. Well, who would say that they're transgender? Well, typical Chappelle. That diatribe, plus his own defense of J.K. Rowling, sparked outrage among the denizens of the woke left. Trans activist Dana White not only slammed Chappelle, but also Netflix for showcasing him, saying, nothing Dave Chappelle says changes the facts that trans women are women. He's wrong, and Netflix has empowered him to be wrong loudly. Of course, the activist said, glad, no surprise there, chimed in as well, claiming Chappelle's comedy was synonymous with ridiculing trans people and other marginalized communities. NPR's TV critic remarked, it just sounds like Chappelle is using white privilege to excuse his own homophobia and transphobia. Wow. Well, Chappelle is using white privilege. Wait a second. Okay, I got it. What? Now, when Chappelle used the most profane language in a previous special to pillory yours truly and Candace Owen, did any of the usual girl power activists come to our defense? Did any major media outlets or celebrity women advocates condemn Chappelle as misogynistic or even say he's disappointing in his attacks? Well, you know the answer. Of course not. And not that we cared. We didn't think it. We don't want it. We don't need their protection. By the way, Chappelle knew what he was doing in attacking us. He thought that by attacking us, he was buying himself expiation for past comedic sins and maybe a free pass for future ones. Well, how did that work out for you, Dave? The fact is, there is no satisfying the insane left that today's Democrat Party spawned and projects. There's no point in anyone trying to placate them or even paying attention to them, because there will always come a day when you'll fall short of their constantly moving woke goalposts. Now, Kristen Cinema should know this by now. It doesn't matter that she's a first that she wears fun outfits, or that she voted to impeach Trump twice. That's not enough. Now that she's standing in the way of Democrats passing their multi-trillion dollar plan to fundamentally remake this country, well, she's leftist enemy number one. What does Senator Cinema value? Oh, right, money. She basically, through her posture here, has turned herself into something 
of an SNL punchline for vagueness and trolling. They're all better off if something happens than if the whole thing collapses. I think that's being called into question a little bit now in, in the um, uh, case of the senator from Arizona, Kirsten Sinema. The backlash against Cinema even extends to Saturday Night Live. Now, remember how they portrayed her back in 2019? Kooky Arizona Lady Cinema. I used to be in the House, but now I'm in the Senate. I'm bicameral, bipartisan, and bi. Deal with it. Well, back then, she's cool. She was cunning, a little quirky, fun. But how do they depict her today? Well... She's kind of an unhinged moron. On one side, we have the moderate Democrats, Kirsten Sinema from Arizona. What do I want from this bill? I'll never tell. Because I didn't come to Congress to make friends. And so far, mission accomplished. <laughs> Let's get real basic. Roads. Everyone okay with roads? I like roads. Me too. Roads are where trucks live. <laughs> Kirsten? I want no roads. No roads? Why? Chaos. <laughs> God, it's aggressively unfunny. Of course, being ridiculed by SNL is nothing uh, compared to being stalked by Marxist foot soldiers into the ladies' room. Oh, and then having that humiliating footage put out for the whole world to see. Now, sure, prominent Democrats issued kind of weak, limp condemnations of that incident, but we all know they really approved of it. Biden even admitted it. I don't think they're appropriate tactics, but it happens to everybody. From the, <laughs> the only people it doesn't happen to are people who have Secret Service standing around them. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's part of the process. The other way. But of course, this twisted game goes both ways. Take what happened to the Bushes and the Cheneys. Like, I'm young enough to remember when they were roundly derided as war criminals for the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Was there anyone more hated by the left than Dick Cheney? Before W's time in office, had you ever seen a president so ruthlessly mocked and derided as a dim-witted frat boy? I mean, I worked for Reagan. It was nothing to compare to what they did to Bush. But now that he's their useful idiot, they've totally rehabilitated him. Same thing for Liz Cheney. It's all so obvious. It's almost boring at this point. No one with a shred of independent thought should be cowed by any of these people. The far left has relentlessly tried to get this show boycotted and even banned, kicked off the air. Look at how well that worked out for them. We've only gotten stronger. Our audience, thanks to you, has only gotten bigger. So instead of trying to ingratiate yourself to the woke mob or try to appease them by saying just the right thing, just be yourself. Stand up for your own views, for the truth. There are more people who agree with us than the left would have you believe. And as for cinema, she'd be far more at home, I think, as an independent. And of course, she's always welcome to cross the aisle and join the uh, conservative movement. At least our side tolerates dissent in divergent views. There's zero room for dissent in her current party. Manchin should do the same and break away from the lunatics that he's had to put up with once and for all. But I don't know, maybe he's too rich or to which they doesn't even care at this point. I don't know. It's, after all, it's kind of easier, right, just to relent, at least in the short term. But remember, unless you're 100% compliant and ready to compromise your beliefs for every leftist crusade, they'll eventually come for you anyway. Just ask Dave. And that's the angle.